Why aren't you getting better at Rocket League? Are you repeating the same mistakes over and over again like a noob? What's up guys, welcome to another video. If you're new here, we love dropping great tips, top 10s and highlights on our channel. We are quickly growing and we appreciate all of our subscribers. If you're not already subscribed and you like the content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications by clicking or tapping that bell. Make sure to give this video a like and share it with friends. I'm Jess for Top Barrel Gaming and now let's get into the video. Today we're giving you guys our top 10 tips and tricks that Rocket League noobs constantly make so that you can learn from them and improve your gameplay. We'll be going over settings, gameplay strategy and some easier things you can do that make a huge difference if you just give them some attention. If you're tired of heading into matches only to constantly come out on the losing end because you're just not figuring out what you're doing wrong, fear no more and let's start counting down our tips. Number 10. Using unchanged camera settings. The camera settings for Rocket League are very important as they can drastically change the way you experience the game. It's important to find settings here that work for you as opposed to blindly copying the settings of your favorite pro. That being said though, it might be a good idea to use those settings used by our pros as a starting point for configuring your own camera settings. Around 70% of pros use the maximum field view of 110. None of the pros that we've analyzed have a field view of under 100, which further indicates that at the highest levels, it's extremely important to have a good, broad view of the pitch. It's probably best to emulate this since you don't want to be put at a disadvantage by seeing less of the field than your opponents can. The average distance that the pros use is around 270. Just make sure you know the advantages and disadvantages of a low or high distance and play around with the setting until you find the setting that's exactly right for you. As with distance, the height is mostly based on preference, but professionals seem to agree on a height between 100 and 130, with the average being 110. The camera stiffness is mostly based on preference. There are some of us who like the loose effect when drifting because it gives a better overview of the pitch, and then there are people who want it to be as stiff as possible for aerials, but professionals, on average, use a camera stiffness of 0.43. Most people don't even know what camera stiffness is, so now that you know, it's best to just fiddle with it a bit and figure out what kind of style you like, because there's not really a best setting to go with here. Overall, there are two settings which definitely give most people a competitive edge, namely field of view and camera shake. The other settings are mostly based on preferences, though pros generally do tend to stay within certain parameters, and if all of the pros are in agreement, then there must be something to it, right? Overall though, it's better to use this as a guide, as settings are a personal thing, and if it works for you, then that's great, even if it doesn't work for anyone else. If you want to learn more about configuring the camera settings, then check out our beginner's guide by clicking or tapping that card on your screen. Number 9. Not rebinding the controls Rocket League's default control setup is fine for casual play. Each button has a dedicated task, be it targeting the ball, accelerating, reversing, boosting, power sliding, or jumping. However, the default controls have a few nagging hangups that could keep you from executing more precise actions during a match. For example, with default controls, boosting and jumping are mapped to the circle and X buttons on a PlayStation 4 controller or the A and B buttons on an Xbox controller. This means that you must use your thumb to input either command, which may give you slightly less precision than if these actions were mapped to, say, the left and right bumpers. This is one of those tips that you should definitely experiment with on your own. You'll find plenty of comments online with players sharing their preferred control setup, but it ultimately boils down to what you're comfortable using. Number 8. Trying to solo carry While learning the ropes, you'll be inclined to make a mad dash for the ball. Everybody wants to be a goal-scoring MVP after all, so it's only natural to make a scramble for possession. But in Rocket League's fast-paced and ever-fluid matches, sticking to the ball isn't always the wisest of choices. If your entire team is fighting for the ball, then no one will be ready to clear a shot at your goal if your opponents wrestle the ball from your possession. Unfortunately, hanging back and fighting at the goal is just as detrimental because your team lacks the pressure of a dedicated offense. The solution is to find a middle ground between offensive and defensive action. During offense, if two of your teammates are guiding the ball towards the goal, hang back a bit and be ready to catch the ball should an opponent make a steal. You'll want to position yourself halfway between the ball and your own goal, 
ready to clear it the moment it gets too close to home. The caveat, however, is that you must follow the ball to make sure it doesn't get back into your own side of the field. If your teammate gets possession of the ball and you happen to be near them, drive up and offer support. You want to help guide the ball into the goal. Do not ever assume your teammate will make the shot. Always be ready to nudge the ball in the right direction if your partner's aim is a little off. Lastly, if you have ball possession, then by all means, carry on. Take a shot, make a pass, or do whatever you think is right for your team at the moment. Just be sure not to get overexcited and drive ahead of the ball. Number seven, not managing boost. Boost capsules are an important part of Rocket League's core gameplay. Boosting lets you blast across the field to intercept or block shots and rival cars and lets you fly through the air during jumps for spectacular trick shots. However, boost is consumed very quickly, so you need to regularly drive over boost orbs on the field to replenish your stock. Boost orbs are available for all drivers and take precious seconds to respawn once collected. Waiting a few moments for a boost orb might not sound like a big deal, but Rocket League matches are fast and furious. Waiting for a boost orb takes you out of the action and cripples your team's offense, which gives your opponents a major advantage for those few seconds that you're away. Keep a good stock of boost on hand and don't go out of your way to collect them either. You can collect a maximum of 100 boost units per match. Common boost orbs on the field restore 12 units each when collected, and respawn in about 4 seconds. Large orbs restore 100 boost units, but these only spawn on the 4 corners of the field and respawn in 10 seconds. As a result, you shouldn't go out to collect them unless the ebb and flow of the match takes you there. Don't get greedy and take a boost just because you can. Remember that you share these orbs with your teammates. The only time you should consider collecting excess boost is when you notice opposing players going for one and want to deny them. Boosting to supersonic speed is a great way to get across the field. Once you reach your top speed, however, you won't go any faster by burning more boost. You can maintain supersonic speed by holding accelerate and forward, so conserve your boost once you reach sonic levels. Number 6. Not being aggressive enough. Your car operates under the same intricate physics that the ball does, though your vehicle is decidedly heavier. This means that you can ram players, and they in turn can ram you. This is particularly useful when you're playing defense. Oftentimes, you find yourself in a position where you can't boost fast enough or knock the ball out of your opponent's possession. In those situations, ramming your opponent can greatly hinder their shooting ability, making them miss a shot on the goal or slow them down enough to let a fellow teammate clear the ball. You can also completely destroy opposing players' vehicles. This forces them to respawn on their side of the map, giving you precious seconds to capitalize on your opponent's weakened offense or defense. In order to destroy a vehicle, however, you need to plow through them in a straight line while boosting. While doing so is useful if successful, it's also extremely risky and should be used sparingly. Attentive players can easily avoid your madcap ramming attempt, which is almost guaranteed to overshoot you. You don't want to leave your team vulnerable while you scramble to reposition yourself, so don't make it a point of destroying cars if you can't help it. In general, you want to hit the ball before you start hitting other players. What do you think of our tips so far? Do you think these will be helpful when it comes to helping your game? Make sure to hit that like button to let us know. Comment down below if you've ever given these tips a try or if you have some on your own. We love hearing from you guys. Number 5. Avoiding play in the air Rocket League's ball is a complex beast that ricochets around the field depending on how hard you hit it, where you come into contact with it, and what part of your car makes contact. Naturally, the ball takes to the air during hectic matches, making it tricky to retake control of it. Fortunately, your car's boost and jump abilities let you fly through the air to do exactly that. Make no mistake though, aerial gameplay is extremely difficult to master and takes a lot of practice to properly grasp. At its simplest, jumping while boosting and holding back on the control stick slightly lets you fly through the air. Further manipulation of the control stick and boost lets you correct your trajectory and pitch. Learning how to control your car in the air is extremely useful and can give you a tremendous advantage during matches. Unfortunately, there is no simple trick to perfecting your aerial game aside from practicing. Our advice is to execute aerial strikes whenever the opportunity presents itself, and make heavy use of Rocket League's practice mode to acclimate yourself to the physics. Don't be afraid to try, you can't get good if you don't make the attempt. 
Number 4. Not using the walls. Making use of the arena walls is a great way to improve your aerial game and take possession of the ball. If an opponent misses a shot or carelessly punts the ball into your side of the field, chances are that the ball will bounce and roll off the back wall and fly wildly into the air. But every second the ball is errant is a second your team is not in possession, which gives your opponents precious time to recover and launch offense. If you see the ball, take to the sky near a wall, make liberal use of boosts and jump to follow the ball into the air and clear it from your zone. As I mentioned before, Rocket League's aerial maneuvering is a significant and important part of the game. A new or inexperienced player could be inclined to wait for the ball to land before making an attempt at repossession. An experienced player won't, and you can rest assured that players who know how to follow the ball into the air will do so at any opportunity to give themselves an advantage. Number 3. Not exploring movement options your movement options are not entirely boost dependent, though boosting certainly helps. The power slide, for example, is a sharp turn that lets you wheel around quickly to orient your car towards the action faster than a normal turn. But there may be situations where you want to go backwards without reorienting your car. For scenarios like these, driving in reverse works surprisingly well when combined with vaulting. Jumping while holding forward or backward makes your car vault in that direction. Doing so as you accelerate increases your movement speed, and repeated vaults further increase your speed. You can easily reach your top speed with some well-timed flips, so be sure to use them liberally if you need to catch up. This is also true for backflips and driving backwards. As crazy as it sounds, driving in reverse while vaulting can be faster than turning or even power sliding. Vaulting is a fantastic way to get into position quickly while also conserving boost, so give it a try sometime. Number 2. Starting without some training Reading tips and advice is fine and dandy, but putting them into practice is another matter entirely. Putting these tips into practice against other players can also be difficult since you will most likely be focused on the match and will only be able to apply these techniques in certain situations. Fortunately for you, the Rocket League's community is aware of the game's steep learning curve and has made custom training packs to create highly specific drills for you to hone your skills. While we won't highlight any specific Rocket League drills, you won't have much trouble finding courses for almost anything you want to learn and practice. The drills are available as codes that you search for so you can start your training at moment's notice. However, there are a few things you want to keep in mind. First, we highly suggest you run drills that have a complimentary video showcasing how the actions are performed. There is no shortage of these on YouTube by highly skilled players, so this shouldn't be a problem. Second, you want to find drills that are appropriate for your skill level. A highly skilled player's drills may be too complex or challenging for you to attempt if you're only just starting. Before we go on, we want to thank you guys for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click or tap that bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, hit that like button. This lets us know that you want to see more content just like this. Number 1. Playing without breaks the last mistake is just as important as the last nine, despite how obvious it may sound. Regardless of how well or how poorly you play, it is vitally important to take a break from the game for a while and rest. No, we're not nagging you about playing too much or anything of the sort. Rather, it's very easy to get overwhelmed as you practice and feel like you aren't making much progress. It's natural to get a little hot under the collar, especially with how rich the gameplay can be and how cutthroat good players are during a match. The trick is to simply step away from the game when you're feeling a little heated. You won't perform any better if you're stressed and you aren't likely to learn or improve either. Accept that you made mistakes and work towards learning from them rather than beating yourself up. Once you're feeling relaxed, give the game another go. Did you find these tips and tricks helpful? Let us know in the comments down below. Check out our other videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell to be notified about our latest videos.